David Burns. The sound. the sound of Northern Lincolnshire and East Yorkshire. And all the music you love. BBC Radio Humberside. As always, thank you very much for your company today. Thank you to Emma Hardy for her uh, company. Don't forget to check out her website. You can find out all the events um, involved in the big conversation. They start with the Tigers Trust. Um, on the 3rd of October, there's all sorts of uh, stuff going on uh, right across um, three weeks. So uh, do check that out and do get along to it. Um, one of the big things at the moment is the uh, mortgage rates, a lot of uncertainty. They're set to go higher. Uh, if you need a bit of advice or you've got a thought on it, do talk to me today. Uh, the whole money man, money man uh, Malcolm Davison, will be in the studio uh, in for the next hour of the programme. So, again, get your calls in, because it's a huge, uh, huge thing for a, for a lot of people. Um, the, the mortgage at Burns Towers is up in the spring, and I'm thinking, what the heck am I going to do? Uh, yeah, I'm this old and I've still got a mortgage. But anyway... Um, so if you want some advice, 08000 665959, get in touch with Malcolm Davidson, who will join me very shortly in the studio. Uh, we're doing uh, two phone-ins for the price of none this morning on the uh, Burnsy Show, all included uh, in your licence uh, fee, which I know you're paying. We're not going to have a debate about the licence fee. Uh, not today anyway. We'll probably do it on another day. So we've had Emma Hardy MP talking about um, matters, well, things that matter to you. One of the things that um, matter most to people at the moment is how they're going to pay the mortgage, uh, especially if their uh, current deal is coming to an end. And we've had years of uh, very uh, low mortgage rates, but that seems to be changing. So have you got a question about your mortgage? Because we've got an expert in the studio. Malcolm Davidson is the whole money man. Joins me in the studio. Nice to see you, Malcolm. How are you? I'm very well, Bernsey. I'm, I'm over it now. Do you know, it's nearly the weekend, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, has it been a, a tad busy since since when, really? Yeah, you, you could say that. I mean, if you think, it's only been a week, hasn't it, since the, since the mini-budget. Um, but yeah, a lot has, has happened. Um, people whose deals are coming to an end genuinely um, and naturally concerned uh, but we've had calls from people who have got mortgages had mortgages thinking about taking out a mortgage anyone that's ever thought of the word mortgage seems to have uh, wanted to engage this week has, has, it, has there been a sense of panic from your clients or, or, or some of them you just try and paint me a picture I mean I, I try and steer away from some of those more emotive words where possible um, because I think that's what's happened this week a little bit. It was um, the big, big story um, earlier in the week, uh, and obviously the Bank of England in intervened. Um, so I don't think it has been panic, um, but um, worry would be more accurate. Right. OK. And what are they worried about? That's a stupid question, but, you know, what, what are they saying to you? Um, what they're saying is that, as we know, everything's going up, isn't it? everything's going up and this it seems to be yet another thing on top of every, everything else um, and they're just concerned especially those ones who have come off these sub 2% deals um, or if you think anyone that's bought a house for the first time last decade has never even seen interest rates go up let alone the spike that we've seen um, this week so it's just that general affordability thing and um, are they doing the right thing by locking into a new deal with their current provider? That's been the general question. Uh, if you've got questions for Malcolm, do join in today. G give us a, a, I don't know, a, a typical mortgage. Somebody coming to the end of the deal that they've had for however many years and are now having to, to look in a different sort of market to replace that mortgage because they still need a mortgage. So on an average amount, I don't know what the average mortgage is these days, what are they looking as their monthly costs going up? Well, if you think for every half a percent that the rate goes up, if you've got a 150 grand mortgage, you're looking at about 40 or £50 pound a month more. But it does vary massively, like you said, depending on how much equity they've got in the house, because they don't get you don't get as good a deal if you've got little equity than those that have been... Um, living there longer with the, with with more equity, um, and all sorts of things come into it, like how many years you've got. So it is really very much tailored, specific to everyone's individual um, 
situation. But for sure, um, anyone that's got a deal coming to its end uh, in the next six months, they're going to face uh, an increase. That is definite. All right. So you say 40 to 50 quid per half. Per t- so if you've got 150 grand, so it's fairly standard. Mm. You know, how much is that? going to cost you a month then because what the rates are going up by what percent at the moment um well this this is it and i think this is going to be the key point um probably i'll and i'll, I'll come back to you with some sort of specific figures on some scenarios as we as we go through the the calls i'm sure we'll get some specific questions from from people but it's this it's this uncertainty that's been caused by the last few weeks and the banks don't know quite how to react so perhaps we can expand on on some of the things that are going behind why these rates are spiking first and that will give some people some insights uh, into why some of these deals were withdrawn earlier in the week it was it was a reaction to what happened on friday why did they re- why did they with the the banks and the mortgage providers withdraw deals well i think the government made a mistake on friday so normally when they do um, a budget you get this obr report um, which is the effect of the changes that are happening on how much more or how much better off Burns is, how much worse off Malcolm is, or whatever this scenario is. And, and they decided not to do that because it wasn't a budget as such. It was a fiscal statement, or what they decided to call it. So um, so perhaps that was done because they thought the numbers didn't add up, or they did add up. I'm not sure why they made that decision. But the market assumed that the numbers didn't add up. And as an, as an impact on that, there was a reaction the pound went down against the dollar the banks didn't quite know where they stood they are well funded so i just like to make that really clear it's not like 2008 when there was no money left the banks have got the money they make the money by lending it out they're just not sure at this moment in time or a few days ago at least how to how to price those products and that's why they withdrew it wasn't like um they run out of cash or no one can get a mortgage again it's just that they're in terms of the wholesale, where they get their money from, they didn't know how much to um, lend the money out at because they're committing to a custom for five years, potentially on a five-year fixed rate. So until they know what they can buy the money in at, they, they couldn't decide how much to lend it out at. And that's still roughly where we are today. Was that uncertainty uncertainty avoidable? I th- was the uncertainty avoidable? Um, probably, I would say, what well, it, it was avoidable. It was avoidable. Um, obviously, there were, there were certain things said in the in the uh, in the leadership where there were commitments made to turbocharge the economy, um, and they did this very quickly, didn't they? Do you know, very very quickly. That could have been uh, thought through or postponed, and I'm not quite sure why the OBR um, weren't allowed to publish the information. But I understand that is changing, and we're going to get that information quite soon. Yeah, uh, there's an emergency meeting going on today between the the Prime Minister and the Chancellor and the Office of Budget Responsibility. You're nodding there. Is that your understanding as well? Yeah, I've, I've heard that. So perhaps if that would have happened last week, um, I could have got my head down and done some work this week um, rather than speaking to customers with complete concerns that, they, that they're unfounded right now. Right. To that end, then... Is it wise to wait for the outcome of of those talks? Because then we might get a bit more clarity and then people might know what's happening with their mortgages and which way to go. You're smiling there, Malcolm. Or maybe it's a quizzical look. I don't know. What do you think? Well, it depends on the outcome of those talks, doesn't it? It depends on the outcome of those talks because, um, you know, none of us have got crystal balls. Um, If the OBR come out and say it's all all unfunded and and the world's all going to end... Then anything anything can happen. All all the all the bets are off, aren't they? So um, so we'll see. Um, I think we've um, there was probably a bit too much not not noise about it. Most people are unaffected. Most people are on fixed rates. There's no immediate concern for people. Um, but you can't change the course of an economy in seven days. Okay, and it's only been a week. If this had happened 30 years ago, we'd just probably just be learning about it, wouldn't we? A week down the track. But of course, it's all happening now um, in in real time. It's, a, it's only been a week. The mortgages are more expensive now than they were a week ago. So you might have um, some regrets um, if you had had the chance to fix last week and you uh, and you didn't. Unfortunately, that's the way things are going. Um, but uh, you're not going to get any predictions out of me. I don't know any better than you, Bernsey. No, well, well, you'll have a better flavour than me. There was there was a, a Fiona Bruce gasped and the audience gasped moment on, on Question Time last night. 
where uh, 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 somebody in the audience said that they'd been quoted, I think, last week, pre-Friday, something like 4% for a new mortgage. And this week, the quote is about 10%. Is, 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 is that what's going on out there? Or that, that seems a bit high to me. Yeah, I mean, we, we've not seen those double-digit um, interest rates now. Crikey, Burnsy, I mean, that's before my time. I've been going 25 years. No, the 4%'s right, so you could you could well be uh, being quoted the rate at 4%, and some deals are still available at, at 4%, um, but we've seen some going into the mid-fives, but th there's not that many deals out there at the moment, so the market is still thinking it over. Um, Malcolm Davidson is the whole money man. He's here today to take your questions rather than me just have a, a, a chat with him. I'll ask some questions, but don't be shy. You only have to give your first name. You don't even have to give that if you want to ask in anonymity uh, to get a bit of advice. Brian uh, sends a note saying, I've just finished working on some new houses. The landlord said he's going to have to increase the rent for the homeowners by £150 for him to be able to cover his mortgage. Looks like renters may also start to suffer, says Brian. Is that a, an unintended consequence? You, you're nodding there that people who provide a service for people who can't afford their own homes won't be able to, to, to do it? So I suppose if you were in, in rented accommodation at the moment, um, thinking about buying, um, you, you might have had some cold feet or decided to sit on your hands this week thinking, oh crikey, that mortgage is going to be an extra 1% or whatever it's going to be. My, my payments are going to be higher than I anticipated. Um, but everything's going up like we've talked about. And if, if you've got a landlord and their mortgage is going up, then at some point, sooner or later, they're going to pass that on. It's like a, any other business, isn't it? If they're, if it's, if they're not making as, as much profit or they're not making any money anymore. Um, now, some landlords don't put rent up because they've got a good tenant in there and um, who are looking after the property and don't want to upset them. They don't want to have that downtime between tenants. Um, so, so some are better uh, than others. But ultimately, yeah, if they've got higher borrowing costs, I think it's, it's almost natural that uh, at some point that's going to get passed on to private tenants. And I take it buy-to-let mortgages are going up as well? Uh, buy-to-let's been a bit more interesting. Um, in, in what way? Well, um, there's not as many fixed rates this week. There's not as many fixed rates. So um, that particular sector is much smaller than the residential sector, but the deals that are available this week have been variable. So at least you can get a fixed rate on a residential. That's more difficult at the moment on buy-to-let. But that provides a service, don't, doesn't it? You know, because they're buying and people are taking the houses and renting and finding somewhere to live because they can't afford to get a mortgage or can't get a mortgage. But that, that is true. It is a, it is a service, but um, over the last seven or eight years, it's less tax advantageous for, for landlords and the... the the dinner party landlord, as we used to call them now, is not a thing of the past, but the, the private landlords now tend to be those with bigger portfolios. Right, OK. On the, the, the subject to getting a mortgage, are, are mortgage companies like, likely to ask for bigger deposits? We saw that in 2020, didn't we? Um, we saw that in 2020 in COVID um, because um, the banks had to send everyone to work from home. There's a lot of from home there was a lot of upheaval um, and they couldn't lend out as many deals as they, as they wanted to because of the inefficiencies uh, and that's one of the ways um, when lenders are struggling to cope with the volume of work that's coming their way uh, of restricting it by saying instead of giving out these 95 percent mortgages which you've had available for for some years now um, i think in 2020 they're restricted down to maybe 85 or 75 temporarily until the market settled and we're back at 95 percent um, as it stands. Uh, so we've not, not seen that, but it could happen. Uh, Malcolm Davidson is here. He's the whole money man. If you've got a question about your mortgage, and it is the big story, uh, you're a little quiet this Friday morning. I've got a few more questions uh, to ask, but if you've got a question, do get involved. <laughs> Now, 08000 665959 or email burnsey at bbc.co.uk. BBC Radio Humberside. Uh, you are very quiet this morning. I thought there was a panic on about mortgages. Malcolm Davidson, the money uh, save. Sorry, I nearly called him the money saving expert. You wouldn't mind being a quid behind him, would you, Malcolm? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the whole money, ma uh, the whole money man is here uh, to take your questions. Uh, this morning on your mortgage. The Prime Minister was saying uh, yesterday... Oh, you found her. You found well, her. Well, she turned up on BBC, eight BBC local radio stations around the country. She doesn't cover herself in glory. Uh, but one of the things she said is, because uh, she was banging on about the, the work they've done to reduce people's energy costs, and one of the things she said, this will in 
reduce inflation by, I'm sure she said 5%. 5%. I thought, well, just do the work they've done on the energy costs. So what does that mean for the mortgage market, Malcolm? Well, um, so I don't think anyone was sort of saying that freezing the energy cap was a bad idea um, because it was looking a few weeks ago um, very bad, wasn't it, for, for a lot of people um, when those predictions were made about what, they, what it sort of could go up to. So this is about how you're going to pay for that. Okay, so several different ways you could pay for it, and the decision that we've that the government has uh, has taken uh, is to is to borrow some money and, and turbocharge the economy. Okay, so cut tax, turbocharge the economy, stimulate a load of growth, and although tax rates are lower, ultimately be the higher tax take because of of of, um, of that increase in the in the GDP. So we'll see, won't we, whether that ultimately whether that turns out to be right or wrong. But the idea behind the freeze on the uh, energy cap was to bring inflation back under control. So we should be at 2%, and we were up in double figures, so 9.9, uh, I think, last figure, around about, about 10%. So this is the whole idea of uh, the freeze, is to bring inflation back under control. And some of the economists are saying we get back closer to normal in 2024. Now, inflation and mortgage rates are intrinsically linked because this is the Bank of England's blunt tool to control inflation. I said before, I think they were asleep at the wheel, very slow to react. Uh, and in fact, they said uh, this week, we won't hesitate um, to move on interest rates. Well, they were, they've been quite hesitant up until uh, this point. So the idea, if the theory is right, is that, um, is that inflation comes back under control sometime during next year or into 2024, and it's when that inflation comes under control that interest rates are reduced, and that's when those potentially those mortgages uh, become cheaper again in 2024. That is the theory. Yes, ex exactly. I, I wonder about the impact of that. So, in, in that case, for a mortgage, should you only look at a two-year fixed deal and see what the situation is in 2024? So I've had this conversation loads this week. All of the logic points to that, OK? All of the logic points to that, that you, you do the two-year deal, re-evaluate the, uh, the situation in 2024 and see where the land lies. However, 2024 is an election year. And if we just go past the last four or five years, these black swan events, Brexit, COVID, election, Ukraine, it's one thing off the back of, an, of another. So those predictions, those longer term predictions are, are futile because so much seems to be changing. Every year we seem to get this new crisis or something else is, is going is going wrong so the logic suggests you do the two-year fixed rate and and and, um, and re evaluate the situation but if you're offered a rate at five percent now for five years and you can afford it and you know you can't afford it if it goes up to seven percent then that could be the right outcome for that particular customer and that's why i'm saying it's, it's it's people's individual situation if they're towards the top end of their affordability, it'd be understandable for them not to do a two-year fixed rate, take the five-year fixed rate while they can, at least it can't get any worse, and maybe they'll just have to turn off the news for a couple of years and not see what's happening to interest rates. So, so you know your costs, you can manage them. It might be more than you ever anticipated paying on your mortgage, mm. but you know what's coming and you're protected. Presumably on a deal like that, if you sign up for five years, if in two years... You, <laughs> I know you're shaking, but it's shaking your head. But I'm going to ask the question: If in two years the market had got back to more normality, mm. it would cost you an arm and a leg to get out of it. The penalty clauses would be huge. I take it. Well, yeah. If you've got a decent-sized mortgage, those penalties are big. On a small mortgage, it, it, it's not so bad. Uh, we've got a bit of software actually, which which monitors people's mortgages, calculates that penalty, and it notifies them if they, if we think there could be savings to make, be made by triggering that early repayment charge. So the technology is moving forward, and, and all our customers get get that. So you can sort of relax a little bit that you don't have to look at your mortgage every five minutes just to check that you're on the best deal. But this is the, this is the gamble that you that you're taking really. Um, I suppose the beauty of it is. It's only with hindsight you know whether you've made the right 
or wrong decision um, but it is um, a mortgage is a it's it's your home it's your house it's a very emotive thing and you don't want to be sort of struggling to pay that i know there are things that people can reorganize in the finances uh, but it's got to be the first bill that you pay so there is a certain value in fixing for longer for some people so they know exactly what they're paying um, it will it remain to be seen in 2024 whether you're fixed in for too long uh, Malcolm Davidson is here, uh, the whole money man. He's a mortgage expert. Uh, he knows his way around the finances. This is your chance to ask a question, your specific situation. You don't have to give your name. We'll only ever use your first name anyway. So if you want to ask a question, feel free to do it. We'll have a tune, the weather and the travel, and then we'll have more uh, from Malcolm as we progress towards um, 12 o'clock. <laughs> Just gone 11.30, you're listening to The Burnsy Show on BBC Radio Homicide this Friday morning. Thank you for your company. Uh, Malcolm Davidson, uh, the whole money man, is our guest. So if you've got a question on your mortgage, I, I assume you're all, maybe you've all paid off your mortgage and you're sitting there feeling, oh, the warm glow of satisfaction. I hope the warm glow of satisfaction will keep you warm through the winter. Mind you, the government have, as Liz Truss constantly reminds us, done something on your energy bills, so that's something. So, have you got a mortgage? I know our... Um, 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 oh, blimey. Blimey, I've just got some breaking news. Get your messages in on that. Love to hear from you. Uh, Malcolm Davidson is our guest in this portion of the programme. We'll get somebody from our sports team uh, as soon as we can on the programme. If you're a City fan, talk to me. Shota Avalanti has been uh, sacked. Um... The whole money man, Malcolm Davidson, is here. We're talking about mortgages. John A says, Burnsy, when mortgages got to nearly 15% a good few years ago and I was struggling, I gave up smoking, drinking and holidays to make ends meet. If people are struggling, perhaps they could cut costs like I did. I acknowledge that the definition of poverty now seems to be that a person has not got a mobile phone or Sky TV, but I'd rather be warm and dry and have enough food. For those who cannot make ends meet, Emma Hardy and a fellow MP should actually stop giving foreign aid away and help British nationals, says John A. That's maybe a discussion for another day. Is there any danger we could be heading for mortgage rates of 15%, Malcolm? Well, it's an interesting point um, that's made there, isn't it? Because a lot of people do re refer back to that Black Wednesday and those interest rates of 15%. Um, an average mortgage in the UK at that time took up 50% um, of a family's net take-home pay. So if you just sort of bring that into into perspective um, but back um, in those days it was the government that controlled interest rates not the Bank of England so the Bank of England only got its independence in 1997 right so and since then really we've we've had rates at five percent where they are about today and obviously subsequently for a good decade or so much lower as we took so long to recover from uh, the global financial crisis of, of 2008 uh, will they get back there? That's a long time ago now. You know, it's 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 thirty it's thirty years almost to the day actually since since Black Wednesday. So you can never say never. But we're nowhere near those kind of levels now. Um, and and the Bank of England normally keep a much closer eye on what's happening uh, with it, with inflation. Uh, there were lots of repossessions in that era, uh, late eighties, early nineties. And um, I suppose there was another point there about cutting your cloth accordingly, which is relevant. So in 2014-15, uh, the Mortgage Market Review uh, brought in these affordability stress tests um, where the, the banks were forced to uh, uh, calculate whether you could afford your mortgage, not just at these 2 and 3% rates, but a rate far higher than that. In fact, it was 3% over uh, the bank, uh, the the bank's own uh, standard variable rate. So right. these mortgages were stressed at seven percent, eight percent, and rates are only at five percent. So they should be affordable, and there may be small tweaks that people can make uh, in the household finances. Um, you know, it's those luxury items. I suppose if people have still got any, um, that can that can maybe. Um, there can be some amendments people can make just to make sure the mortgages do remain affordable. It, it, it is always the first thing that you want to pay, remember. So, the, you know, you're not going to want to just blindly stop paying your mortgage and, and all those uh, types of things. There are things that can be done. You can extend your mortgage term with your lender if you're really starting to struggle potentially Is it as well. worth talking to your mortgage company? 
Definitely. The worst thing you can do if you're in financial difficulty is to, is to bottle it up. Uh, the banks do have to um, treat each uh, case, what they call sympathetically is the word that's used. Um, so they will, they will talk to you and do what they can where they can. Uh, and this was, of course, um, something again that happened in 2020 uh, with the mortgage holiday. Malcolm Davidson is here. Real world problems. People trying to pay the mortgage. She's the whole money man. Um, but if you want to react to Shot Avalanti getting sacked, do feel free. Just before half eleven, we were talking about um, the volatility of the market and whether you should tie in at two years or five years. Some, I, I'm sure, I read somewhere saying there were ten year deals out there that are cheaper than two year deals at the moment. Is that the case? Well, do you know, um, those 10-year deals have become um, more popular um, in recent months anyway, before any of this um, was happening. So normally, the two-year fixed rates are cheaper than the threes, the threes are cheaper than the fives, and the fives are cheaper than the tens. That's always been the case in this 25 years I've been doing this job. But this year, over the last few months, for the first time, we've seen the five-year deals being cheaper than the two-year deals. So when things like this happen, I always try and put my thinking cap on as to, as to, as to why for the first time the longer term fixed rates are cheaper than the two. And I think it turns back to um, uh, one of the subjects from earlier in our conversation, which is the banks must feel that interest rates are going to continue to go up in the short term, but reduce again in, in the in the longer term. Um, I, th I think that's why we've, we've seen this. But again, as I said to you before, things can change. So is, is a 10 year deal worth it? I think a 10-year deal, um, let's just say you've got 10 years left on your mortgage, you've offered a 10-year deal to fix in now, you know you can afford it, it takes away uh, all that uncertainty that you know you can get to the finishing line uh, no matter what life has got to throw, throw at you. So yes, I think it is the right thing for some people, but if you, only, if you were a first-time buyer with a 5% deposit, uh, perhaps that would be too long. A lot can change in 10 years. So... Um What's your best advice to people at the moment on their mortgages? Okay, so it depends on the situation that you're in. So if you're if you're currently midway towards buying a house uh, and you've applied for your mortgage or your mortgage has already been offered, you've got no cause for concern. The rate that you applied for last month or three months or four months ago is locked in and your mortgage offer lasts for six months. So if you're buying a home, no need to panic. Your deal is completely safe. I found a bit like Jimbo in there, didn't I? You did. <laughs> and if you get it wrong, you won't get the speedboat. <laughs> so um, so, so those, those people are absolutely fine. Um, if you're in the middle of a fixed rate, so you fixed last year, the year before it, you're in the middle of a fixed rate, it's not finishing any time soon, then you're probably on the best deal because you'll have fixed much lower than the deals are available today. Now, we've had a lot of calls in this, re in this regard. Should we pay our penalty and come out and fix again at these higher rates? Um, you'll be fixed into a higher rate if that is the case. Okay. And if people in the middle of the fixed rates and worried about it, we don't mind having a chat just to allay those uh, allay those fears. And it's if it's your if your mortgage is finished in the next six months, those are the people that need to take action. See what your bank is going to offer you to stay, but please, please compare that with whatever else is out there as well. I might be giving you a call about Burns Towers. Nice to talk to you, Malcolm. Thank you very uh, much for that.